Hi. Hope you're well. I've got to get something off my chest. I've wanted to make this video for over a year. And I've always just had excuses after excuse just crop up. And I always told myself once the situation had been resolved legally, I would make the video. And that was over two months ago now. And I've still come up with excuses. And I'm finally aware that I'm going to make excuses to not talk about this until I die. So, God, that was deep. Did not need to be that deep. But, ah, uh, I don't want any cuts in this. Unless I say something I, I shouldn't, but... I want to put this story out there. Not only for me, so I can sleep better at night, hopefully, and and move on, because I don't think I can really move on until I put it out there. But also to, to spread awareness, and even if it, if it just helps one person go down a better path or avoid a bad situation, then I'll I'll be happy. <laughs> and I'll have a bit of a platform, it's, it's nothing big. But I also feel like I have a bit of responsibility to share what happened, because I had no idea this could have happened. So, give a bit of backstory. In high school, I was very shy and very quiet, and honestly, I was very weird. <laughs> like, not, 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 not the quirky way, like, just weird. So... After I, I left high school, when I was 16, and I went to college and I started a gym, I had more confidence, and I went to college doing A-levels as a new kind of guy. And I had, I wasn't popular, but I had, like, quite a lot of friends. I was in multiple different groups, mainly, mainly two groups, and around four or five months into college, I ended up uh, falling out with two of the big groups and therefore everyone I counted that I lost around 20 friends over a two month period which <laughs> I have nowhere near 20 friends now or not even anywhere since I, I just a, a few so I went from being this shy guy shy guy <laughs> in high school to this this confident but more confident talkative guy in college I lost a lot of friends so that was all I knew now. I All I knew was being this confident, say it how it is, just I was, I was kind of like a, sh a shell of a person I want to say where I was just always on. Like you know how you might act with a certain group of people to try and fit in more. I was just constantly in that mode. So after I dropped out of my first year of A-levels, I started a level two fitness instructor course because I was skipping college to go to the gym. So I thought, why not just go to the gym in college <laughs> and not get in trouble for it? So that's where I met someone that we're gonna call Joe. And in this class, there was also one of my old friends uh, that obviously I didn't get on with now, so that reinforced the new persona that I, I was, that I'd become, where I just made everything bounce off me, run off me. I never let anything go, you know, get into me. Not like that. And I... Uh, there was a... So yeah, I, I, I met Joe. And Joe was the typical, you know, more popular, very similar body type to me. He did a bit of uh, boxing on the side and uh, quite chubby. And yeah, we we were never friends, but we got on. Sometimes we went to the gym, but he liked to uh, he he'd look for the, the weakest person in the in the class physically or. Or just who you, who you could take the, the piss out of easiest. And 
make jokes at them, no matter, no matter who it was. And I, I don't want to come across like I'm this great guy, because that's not at all how it was. But I, I stood up where I could, and I, indirectly or whatever was going through my mind, I forget a lot of this stuff. You'll find out why later. Uh, I, I made myself the main target. And there was this first interaction that we had where we were walking back from the gym together. He had an extra class, and I was going to go home. But we were walking the first half of the journey the same way. And I said, he said, walk me all the way back to college. And I said, no, I'm not your bitch. And we got engrossed in conversation. I ended up walking all the way back to college, realised, and I said, I'm not a bitch. And he said, yes, you are. And that's kind of where our... not conflict, but our rivalry kind of started to rub against each other. So him trying to convince that I was a bitch and me trying to convince that I was nobody's bitch. It was kind of two, two heads, especially in a, in a gym class. There's lots of egos always clashing against each other. And I was one of the um I wasn't the one of the biggest egos in the class but I was definitely a big factor in that I was what was rubbing against a lot of people because I wasn't this chad uh you know chav kind of kind of guy I was still me I was still the not nerd but you know the guy that got the top test results and actually paid attention in class so uh, this goes on from around September time. It gets worse and worse until around March. Now I just t I turned eighteen in October, so March my no we're jumping ahead we're jumping ahead. So this rivalry built up and built up more and and more over the college term, all the way to about February. And that's when it started getting into physical threats where he'd say, come on, fight me right now, fight me on the car park. And I always came back with the same response. No, I'm not going to fight you. You're not worth it. Which I completely stand by as a, a point of view and a, an approach. And I think the best approach you can take. And obviously that, that annoyed him even more because he couldn't settle things, I guess, the only way he knew how, which was violence. And if you know anything about me, especially now, I am strongly against violence of any sort to people, to animals, to to anything. So the threat started and uh, like lecturers were aware of it all. It was just open in class, just threats and everything. I was like, I'm fine. Can't do anything in college. Don't see him out of college. Don't see him at the gym anymore. So it's it's fine. Now, in March, just before Easter, my mate turns 18. And that's the legal drinking age in the UK. So me and two mates go out, our first night out, because it's the first time we've had people that were 18 to actually go out with, because I've always been the oldest in my friend groups. And we went to clubs. Uh, you know, we start off at, at Weatherspoons, you know, a very popular pub in the, in the UK. Had some drinks there, went to another club. Had some more drinks there. You know, about four hours in. Then we go to another another club that we've never even seen before. And never obviously been in it before. So we pop in there. We have another four drinks. I'm about 17 drinks in so far. About five hours into the night. And uh, we sit at the back. We have a laugh. It was honestly one of the best nights ever. And this was... Good Friday it was we went out, Good Friday. So it was it was an amazing night. And then uh, so there were three of us out. And then we decided to go home. So two of us could walk. The other one lived further away, so he went to get a taxi. Uh, so we walked out to get him a taxi and we bumped into one of our high school friends and he said, Yo, come back in after and come have a drink with us. So one of our friends went home, the other two you know, me and my mate, we went back in. 
And without even realising, there was like 10, 15 people from high school there, people from college. i say about 20% of the club I knew didn't get on with them all. But, you know, you feel safe when there's that many people that you know around. And I also bump into Joe, who was there. So, you know, we always had this, even though it was a rivalry, I always saw it as a bit of banter as well. And I was drunk. So I just, I pulled the middle finger up at him and we started having a conversation just to normal conversation you know like he said why'd you pull the middle finger up at me and I was like I don't even know what I said if I'm honest but it was just like it's like just a way of saying hi or I don't know it's clearly very stupid but he was there not in college with three of his mates and, and then you know me and my mate split off to talk to different people from high school see how they were doing and <sighs> him and his mates started coming around the club and then saying that his mates wanted to beat me up as well and I said well I'm not gonna fight I'm not gonna box you know, any of you and I just kept walking off like I normally did even though I'd had now at this point I think I counted I'd had 22 drinks in total so I at this point, I would have been on like 20, 21 drinks. It had been over a long period of time. And when you're doing it constantly out clubbing, at least with me, I was able to keep quite a sturdy head on. Like, I was definitely very drunk, but I had a straight head on. I wasn't like stumbling all over the place. Whew. And uh, at one point, I get separated. I, uh, there's like a little outside bit to the club and uh, I'm up there up against the, the wall, chilling, and the four, Joe and three of his mates, they, they come up to me and they start, you know, mouthing off. Now that there's more there, they're being more aggressive. And one of them had hair, you know, it was kind of like just standard down like that so to show that I wasn't intimidated which is the whole thing that had been going on for the past six months it was them trying to intimidate me and me showing that I was not intimidated I just simply swished his hair to the side you know maybe it was more like I say I was very drunk but to me that's all it was and like maybe it was more harder on the push or maybe it looked different but then one of the bouncers saw this and, and grabbed me I said you know what did I do uh, opens the gate at the back of the, the bar and um, pushes me out and then lets these four come out with me. Which is, you know... But I have no idea what went through that bouncer's head. I don't know if they just wanted to avoid something happening in the club or if they had any idea what was going on. I called my mate that was still in the club and he didn't pick up because it's very loud in the club. He didn't notice. <sighs> Sorry. I've never told this story, you know, openly. I've told it openly in a private Facebook group just over a year ago. And other than that, you know, I told my parents, told the police, and that's it that I've told the full story to, as far as I'm aware. I've mentioned bits and bobs to other people, made jokes about it, but... Excuse me. Ah. It's been two years, so I need to... Just, just for my own mental health, if nothing else... So I'm now outside about half past one in the morning with four guys that have been saying they want to beat me up. And uh, with nowhere to go, I'm there with Joe and he says we're doing it now. 
Oh, I get up a, a basic defense. And uh, all I remember is that I got a hook. <sighs> to the side of the face. I know I was dropped. And at the time, it felt like I was flat out on the floor, being kicked, being hit, having my face hit against the concrete. I don't think that exactly happened, because one of them was recording the whole thing. What it looked like on the recording was that Joe, obviously that's not his real name, had me gripped up by the shirt, and then was just continuously punching me in, in the face. And, oh, again, I was very drunk, so I don't remember exactly what I was thinking. But I do believe that I had, you know, I was accepting, you know, whatever happened. I, I do remember the thought, is this the end? You know, I was just... Oh. And then uh, I, uh, I, I blacked out. I was, um, I went unconscious and... I was I was woken up by a a lady, uh, with some guys around her, and it was the the police. And what had happened, we saw on the on the video, is that the police had come around the corner and seen it, run after them, and they just run off. So that's that's how it ended. You know, police look after me. They call my mate off my phone, he answers this time, he comes out to look after me and call an ambulance because I I can't open my eyes. When I get in the ambulance, my eyes are, are shut and that's how they stayed for quite a, quite a while. Uh, because uh, So he comes with me in the ambulance, I explain what happened, we go in the ambulance, oh, we get to A&E, the Saturday after Good Friday, so it's... It, it's packed. It's it's so packed. I get put in a wheelchair because my eyes just started getting swollen shut with bruising and blood. So I could not see. So my friend stayed with me. I'm so grateful that he did this in A&E. Uh, we got seen around half past four, I think, for the first time. Again, they tried to open my eyes and have a look, but they, they couldn't because they were swollen shut too much. But I stayed in A&E until about half past eight when I was able to call my parents and get them to pick me up. But I, after this, for a little while, I I couldn't feed myself. It's, I couldn't. I was able, because obviously I was still very trying to be independent. I could get changed except for putting socks on. It's quite hard to have the hand-eye hand foot coordination to um put put socks on when you can't see i basically just slept for the next few days just <sighs> and uh i i have no way of of knowing this for certain but i do in terms of concussion i i had a concussion and i believe it lasted for around Six months, it was around September when I started finally being able to remember stuff properly and... Excuse me again. And, uh, and, and think straight. So, uh... That was, um... Yeah, 2019 this was, so it was a very... Very, uh, rough... It was a rough year. I just got my first job just beforehand as well, so it was, um... It was a physical job, so I had to have a different... I had to be uh, on, on computers for the next six weeks. Uh, after four weeks after this, I went to the optician uh, so they could actually look at my eyes so they weren't swollen anymore. And uh, they had a look and they said, no, no it's, uh, it's all fine. But I'd noticed that I couldn't see as much out my left eye as I, I normally could. So he had a, a closer look just at the end before telling me to go. And he noticed there was a little tear, a little cut. 
So this was the first time I went to the eye hospital and I am very familiar <laughs> with this ward by now. So it uh, turns out what had happened is that my eye had been punched uh, so many times, so much blood force to it, that my my retina had become unattached from the rest of my eye. So it was like a, a layer had kind of peeled off, had been torn off. And if this wasn't fixed, I would have gone blind in that eye. So in, in May, I had surgery. Honestly, that was a, sounds weird, but that was a, a nice day. Because I knew for the first time since then that I was actually completely safe. The hospital gave me my own special room, TV, bed, my own little ensuite. It was it was really nice. And obviously I was unconscious for the whole whole surgery. So they put a, a laser scar just to stop the the spread. So to kind of demonstrate it in case anyone is interested. I had so that was my eye light like that so what they did is that they put a laser scar in there so that way it couldn't tear any more past it if if anyone's interested about eyes and stuff and that is why I do have oh, come on camera please focus you've been focused for so long there we go. So you can't really see it too much on camera, but I have a scar here. I have a scar here. And I have another scar on my actual eye. So I have lost uh, part of my, my sight. I, I wasn't given any, like, any actual numbers from the doctors, but from my experience living with this, I, uh, I think I've lost about one, one eighth of my of my sight in my left eye it's kind of like the far corner of my bottom left peripheral so it's it's very weird and uh it's very very hard to explain like you think where it like losing sight it's you just imagine it being like closing your eyes like it's just black but it, it's not because when you are closing your eyes you are still you're just looking at the inside of your eyelids Whereas not being able to see, like you literally see nothing. I've seen this before on, on the internet where people say it and it's so true that not being able to see out out your eyes is the same as not being, like you can see, I can see as much in, out of this bottom left as you can see out of your elbow, if that makes sense. Like you can't see anything out there and it really opened my eyes to that so that happened and I mean, that that was almost the end of it obviously there was um police involved and everything and that got resolved December just gone so it took about 20 months obviously it was delayed because of COVID it took longer and uh, the court dates and stuff that was uh, finally all, all sorted and obviously that's not what I cared about but I, expect, I expected that to give me some closure and it did for a little bit but every month or so I've been just not being able to sleep uh, you know, I, I suffered from anxiety back in high school and during college but like after like I mentioned before after I lost so many friends I kind of just went, like I say, I became more of a, a shell of a person I felt like anyway. And um, I didn't feel any anxiety after like April 2018, all the way through until late April 2019, when it wasn't even when I was getting beaten. It was when I saw them again in the gym, because I didn't know I had like, a severe eye injury at that point. That's why I was still lifting. Uh, obviously, when you have an eye injury, you aren't supposed to lift anything heavy or do anything strenuous, like 
concentrate, basically. Just can't really do much. So uh, that's that's what happened. And uh, there's uh, obviously been a lot more effects carrying on. Like you may have noticed that if you've watched my videos a lot, that I I do wear glasses, and that wasn't directly from well, it, it was, but from this incident, I didn't suddenly wear glasses. So this happened in the end of March, start of April. I think Easter was the end of March that year. And I didn't have glasses all the way through until I think it was about April or May 2020, so a whole year later. So again, if you're interested in eyes, ah, and because I lost a, a significant amount of sight out of my eye, my left eye, my right eye overcompensated, and because it overcompensates so much now, my brain kind of ignores my left eye, which makes it just worse. If it's not using it, it's just slowly getting worse and worse. So I have glasses, which kind of helps. I ex I experience best way to describe it is vertigo because of the imbalance in my eyes multiple times a day. Every time I stand up or if I'm looking slightly up and go down, doesn't matter how quickly or slowly I do it. Every time I get out of bed, I get very dizzy. Um, there's just so many, you know, little health effects that you don't realise from this thing. And this isn't a video, I think I mentioned it at the start. Apologies if I didn't. It's not a video about getting sympathy like I say it's I want to finally get it out you know it's it's been in I want to finally let it let it all out and oh excuse me sorry should not have been having phantom before this ah oh. and also spread awareness that violence doesn't fix any solutions at all you know he's Joe as a as a record now, and you know if everything's going to be worse for him because he tried to use violence to show I don't know, I don't know what goes on inside inside the heads, and obviously sometimes even though I wanted to be the guy that never backed down, sometimes just back it off, even if it makes you look look weaker. Or, or beta, I hate that, that terminology, but even if it makes you look like that to others, you know, if it's not worth it, it's not worth it, you know. I told him that I wasn't going to fight him because it wasn't worth it, but really what I should have said is that I wasn't going to engage or acknowledge him because it wasn't worth it. You know, I was warned by Lex Ridgely, just don't even engage, completely ignore it, but again, you know, the ego, sometimes some... Some people aren't worth engaging in. Some sometimes arguments are just better left lost than escalating them. Just because you want to be the bigger man, it's it's not not worth it. And I also want to raise awareness because I know there's quite a few 15, 16, 17 year olds watching that uh, obviously can't go out yet. Uh, I know we're in a lockdown. Sorry, I never drink fizzy drinks and. I do it the one day I want to do this video. So, it, it, it's kind of just let you aware, like when you are old enough to go out drinking, just, you know, be careful. Don't, don't act over macho, or don't swing your dick around. Just, sometimes it's better just to keep to yourself and have a good time, because it was still a very good night until... I just don't want the, the same thing that happened to me or even the same thing that Joe's had to go through for his ego. Like, just... I don't want any of this to happen again. Obviously, I can't control that. But that's, like, the main reason I pressed charges. It wasn't for me, because it had happened. You know, it was... Because I don't want another situation to happen where 
because someone doesn't back down, they end up getting, you know, beaten almost to blindness, almost to death, you know, like, if the bullies hadn't come around that corner, who knows, you know? But another thing I just want to end on, I just, if you've had something bad happen, you know, I've told you my, my bad, my big bad thing. <sighs> and with life, you've got to be glad that everything happened. And it sounds very strange, but I'm at a point now where I am glad that this whole thing happened. Obviously, not being beaten and losing eyesight and losing so many memories. And, you know, I don't remember anything from, like, I don't know, basically all of 2019, I have, like, two memories that I, I can remember. I feel like there's very, very few things I can actually think of from that year compared to other years. And, uh, just... Without this, I probably won't have gotten back into the tube. Uh, I wouldn't be as... I wouldn't be the person I am now. I wouldn't be as mature, you know? I probably still want to be surrounded by yes men like I used to be, rather than now I am surrounded by much better people. I'm a much better, more mature person, and I have a feeling that my life has meaning, you know? I was kind of lost, which is why I was just going out wanting to party, you know? Going out for 6, 7, I think we met at 6pm, so... We were drinking for like seven and a half hours before this happened. And we probably would have been going until like 3, 4 a.m. That was the plan anyway. I just wanted to party and then this gave me meaning. And it also gave me the the feeling of mortality. Knowing that you can die at any, any second, you know. No matter what happens, you can... I'm not going to give examples because I don't want to scare anyone going around... It's hard enough going outside sometimes, as it is nowadays. You know, I, like, after this, I don't think I left the house on my own for months. I walked my dog, like, once or twice, but even to go to the shop, I had to ask my mate to come with me. Terrified. Every time someone looked at me, any time I saw anyone that wore slightly chubby clothes, I would just have to run. Like, I, I would just hide. It was, uh... Yeah, obviously, obviously very, very traumatic, but you got to be glad that everything happens. Everything makes you stronger in the end, and I'm, I'm such a, a better person for it. And no matter what has happened to you, or what is happening, or anything that will happen, it will always, if you let it, it will make you the better person. It will benefit you. You just have to know what lessons to take from it. Everything's a, a learning experience. Oh, See, I, I never knew if I wanted to make this or not because I don't want to put any negativity out there, which is why I've tried to put a positive spin. But even if this doesn't help anyone, you know, it's... it's hopefully it just does spread awareness and hopefully I can have sleep now because like I say, you know, it's the reason I have the, the stick I've shown in videos sometimes that I, I sleep next to and some nights I get it and I, it used to happen every time I close my eyes I would just see it all again. And sometimes now if I just think about it slightly when I'm in bed, that's it. I, I just go down a rabbit hole, I can't sleep. I think I should make the video, oh you know, but what, what if they see it and they want to beat me up again, it's not going to happen. And uh, I, so I, I just can't sleep in my own bed sometimes because I'm just, just traumatised. But such a big step in overcoming something is being able to talk about it. If you look at how I was at the start of the video and how I am now, you can see, or hopefully, that I'm talking a lot more fluently and openly than I was back then, because once you start getting into it, it's like therapy, you know, it's like once you start talking to your therapist, more and more it just kind of comes out and you just open up more, 
and that's what it's about. So I, I do encourage talking about stuff. If you are bottling something up, there's always going to be someone, a family member, a friend, hotlines, which I'll have in the, in the description. Because it's a very hard time mentally for everyone over the last year. And even though I might have had physical injuries, the mental damage has, has been much, much worse. So, uh, I, you know, I know about mental, mental health struggles. So if you do have any, just, just call, just call someone or talk to someone. It's, it's so much better than suffering alone. Cause I don't know what I would have done if I was alone during all this. So I think you guys, if you, if, if you have watched to the end, uh, I didn't have any sort of script for this. I tried to write one. It didn't, it didn't work. So hopefully the story was coherent and just just try and spread positivity you know i'm uh, still have a video out tomorrow like like normal and, uh, yeah i hope i hope you're all doing well during lockdown we should almost be at the end of this whole pandemic and we can start to live again Oh, thank you for getting this far, and I just hope you have a, a great, great rest of your week. Remember, everything can be a positive if you let it. <sighs>